And if God said don't do it, it'd be foolish to do it because you can't think you're smarter than the Lord. So fearing the Lord is about realizing that God has all wisdom and I ought to follow his directions because following his directions is safe and secure and will bless me and cause me to be successful, but not following his direction leads to destruction. So the book, uh, in the, and you look in chapter one, it first says, it says, young man, walk with wisdom as your companion. Then it even shares that wisdom is better than silver and gold. And I shared at 8 o'clock, you know why wisdom, uh, Brother Kevin, is better than silver and gold? Because you can have all the silver and gold, but if you don't have any wisdom, you're not going to have that gold or silver much longer. <laughs> Amen. You know, you know what I'm saying? You can have that gold and silver, but the Bible says a fool and his money are quickly departed. Yeah. Amen. So you can have that money, but if you don't have any wisdom to go along with that money, that money won't be in your pocket long. Oh, I wish I had a witness to say, I've been there, Pastor. I know it was in there, and I did something foolish, and it was gone. Or I just testify about myself. Amen. But, but it, it talks about that wisdom is better than silver and gold. And then it talks about wisdom bringing you security and wisdom bringing you a great reward. And wisdom in the book of Proverbs is always juxtaposed or compared to foolishness, wickedness. And so in the book of Proverbs, it repeatedly uses words like this, understanding, get knowledge, prudence, shrewdness, instruction, discipline, and, and, and wisdom. These are, these are words that become the anchor to what a, a, a wise person's life. When you're wise, you, you're knowledgeable, you're understanding, you're prudent, you're shrewd, you, you're quick to get instruction, you're quick to take correction. Uh, the words are at the core of those who are well-respected, and these are rudimentary for someone who wants to be successful in life. And so the proverb goes to great lengths to distinguish between that which is foolish and that which is wise. And so, like, like I said, the fool in the book of Proverbs is betrayed as a know-it-all, where the wise person is always seeking understanding. The fool is opinionated, always thinking he's right, versus the wise who understands there's no way anybody can be right all the time. A fool talks too much, but the wise are slow to speak and quick to listen. Uh, a fool is the person who can't take correction, but the wise can welcome criticism. The fool is impulsive, but the wise practice self-restraint. The fool is quick to do evil, but the wise flee in the opposite direction of evil. The fool shows himself foolish by his pride, while the wise show themselves wise by their humility. And so today I want to give you some fatherly advice. I've got, I've got four sons, so I understand I'm giving advice all the time. And, 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 and here in the scripture, uh, Solomon lays it out. This is good wisdom. So on Father's Day, let's get a little fatherly advice. Y'all with me? Can we go there? This is Dion. Amen. Brother Kip Coleman. Let's see. It says this. Number one, verse one, it says, whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is stupid. Let me give you, now I'm going to give you this, my words, and then we'll kind of break it down. In my words, I would say this, you don't know everything. <laughs> Elbow somebody next to you and say, neighbor, you don't know everything. <laughs> now, see, I gave some of y'all a pass because you've been wanting to tell that person that they don't know everything, but now the preacher said you can say it, amen. You don't know everything. Mm, what do you mean, pastor? Well, let me break it down. I got, so the first point is you don't know everything. Let me, let me give you the sub points on that one point. You don't know everything, so, so if you don't know everything, you ought to be on a lifelong quest to gain knowledge. You ought to love to gain knowledge, learn more information, grow. Brother Dillard, you got a great golf game, but it can, you, can go, you can take it higher. Sister Alice, you, make so you can cook, but you can take it better. You can go, you, we can always go, brother, brother Kevin, you're a good accountant, but you, what, you can take it, you can go deeper, you can go higher. You can always improve on what you're doing. You can always gain more knowledge. You can always gain more understanding. You, look, you are never too old to learn something new, to grow. That's, that, that sometimes messes up churches because churches sometimes don't want to grow. They don't want to learn anything. They don't want to change anything. Amen. You got to, look, you have to, look, you don't know everything, and so you can't assume you got it all. You got to want to grow, want to learn. I read every day. You ask my wife, I'm reading all the time, trying to gain knowledge, trying to gain understanding. Why? Because there is a lot to know. There's a lot to learn. And a lot of times, the more you know, the less you, problems you're going to have to deal with because you can avoid some pitfalls. Somebody's already written down the answer to something you're trying to figure out. And if you think you know everything, you are, you are fooling yourself. Well, so the first thing, so under that one, love to gain knowledge. Let me give you the second part of that. Love to learn, check this, how to consistently apply the knowledge that you've learned. 
You know, consistently apply the knowledge you learn. Stop learning the same lesson over and over again. Oh, see, I... Discipline in the text means to do it consistently. So when you learn something and you get some wisdom, I'll give you an example. The scripture talks about saving your money. All right? So you consistently save your money. When trouble comes, because you consistently save your money, you're going to have emergency funds. I'm talking to myself right now. I know, I know all of y'all dot all T's and dollar I's across every T. When trouble comes, you have some money set up side because it, it, a rainy day will come. Am I right about it? You, you got to know that. You got to understand that. That's good. So, so if, why would I have to keep finding myself by spending all my money that I have and finding myself in a situation where I don't have it because I didn't save when I did have it? So being disciplined means to consistently apply the knowledge I learned. You learn something. That's the problem with a lot of us. We learn it and then had to learn it again. <laughs> then had to learn it again. Okay, all right, y'all, I should have got some better amens in there. That's all right. Well, look, it says, look, he loves discipline, loves knowledge. Because knowledge cons consistently applied over time will bless you, will save you some trouble. Let me give you another one under this. You don't know everything. You ought to see correction as constructive and don't reject it but receive it. Look what it says, whoever hates construction is stupid. So, if, so you shouldn't hate it, you should what? Love correction. Let me help you. Young folk, listen to me. While you're young, you're going to get a lot of correction. Old folk, listen to me. You still need correction. Let me, I'm going to say it again. Young folk, you're going to need a lot of correction. Older folk, you still need some correction. Don't think you can get to the place where somebody doesn't have to correct you. Now let me help you. When we get correction, what's the first thing we, we feel like doing? We want to, we, look, this is what, look, you don't do this. Well, you don't do anything either. Because the first thing you want to do is deflect it and put on them something they're not doing without admitting that maybe they are right. Now, let me help you. Just because they said it wrong don't mean it ain't right. 